Thou hast not known the time of thy visitation. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. If you've ever come back from a foreign country, you know you get a little customs and immigration form which tells you to list the countries you have visited on this trip. It's an unusually cold, bureaucratic use of a word which generally has a very warm kind of connotation, the word visit. So I put down that I had visited France and Belgium. It occurs to me that we drove through Germany many times as well. And of course I went to Europe to visit a wonderful priest who was keeping his golden jubilee, Father Paul Schonbrut, who is still going strong because he goes unto the altar of God who gives joy to our youth. And he impresses me in his zeal and pastoral activities like a newly ordained priest. He travels from Belgium, sometimes as far north as Scandinavia, Sweden, or down uh, to the Czech Republic to the south. A very edifying priest indeed. After his golden anniversary celebration, I visited several other places, that a convent of Our Lady of La Salette, sisters, the little chapel where one of the great leaders of the Catholic resistance, Father Barbara, used to have his mass center in Tours, and Father Roger's chapel again in Rennes. The point of these visits was to help and to encourage our Catholics over there. Oh, and of course to listen, because it's a bishop's duty to listen to lots of big problems. And I went away, despite the problems, very encouraged with the sense that perhaps I had been able to do a little bit of good for all of these good people as a result of the visits. When I had a little time to make a little pilgrimage on Sunday afternoon to a lesser known site of one of Our Lady's apparitions at Bagneux which is uh, very near to where Father Schoenbert is in Belgium, outside of the city of Liège. Our Lady appeared there as the Virgin of the Poor on a January night during the Depression, the year 1933. Uh, She appeared to a little girl who was the Tom girl of her class. Her name is Mariette Becco. This little girl was a stinker. She had stopped attending catechism, and she had stopped attending mass. And her father wasn't too much for the faith, but Our Lady chose her. It was a cold night. They were very poor. And she picked up the the sheet they hung over the one window in their living room, which served for a curtain, and she saw a beautiful lady all in light, dressed in white, who beckoned to her. Her mother saw part of the vision at the beginning, too. So she went outside, uh, eventually, and she, she knelt down, and she prayed her rosary. And she persevered doing that for weeks and weeks during winter, and then very rainy weather, too. And Our Lady came to her many times, just said a few words, I am the Virgin of the Poor. She led her to a spring, which she said will be used to relieve suffering for all nations. And she asked, of course, that a chapel be built there. And so thousands of people, tens of thousands, have gone there. It's a beautiful series of of, uh, outdoor shrines, a kind of a garden-like setting, perfect for a visit and prayer and meditation. Only somebody who is really close to you can visit you. That's why it's such a privilege to visit Our Lady. There's, there's, a, there's a world of warmth in that word, to visit. Now, contrast that with the word used by our blessed Savior in today's Gospel. Visitation. Thou hast not known the time of thy visitation. That word has a solemn, and sometimes a sad connotation, the visitation or viewing of the body of a deceased to pay our respects, for example. Sometimes it has a formal meaning, as when the bishop of a diocese with authority visits church to see that all is in order, or the superior of a religious order does the same thing going to a convent or a monastery. It's called a visitation. 
But this is the word that we use for the second joyful mystery, whose feast we just kept on the 2nd of July. It was a visitation, but more than that, it was a visit with all of the sense of closeness and of comfort and of company keeping, of cheer, that that word entails. There you have two improbable mothers, miraculously have each of them conceived, both of them conceived their child. And and there they are together now for months, consoling and encouraging and helping each other. But also in the visitation, that's our rosary mystery for this Sunday, you see a kind of a solemn progress of the precious blood. Our Lord has just been conceived in the virginal womb of Our Lady, and already he is going forth on a kind of a search-and-destroy mission for sin. It is the first victory of our Lord's saving blood. The last of the Old Testament prophets must be purified of original sin before his little eyes see the light of this world. Another way to look at the visitation for your thoughts or meditations is to think of a procession, a Eucharistic procession, or the procession we'll have tonight, a Marian procession, or both together, because they always go together. All of our great devotions to the Blessed Sacrament had an origin with devotion to the Blessed Mother. That's where benediction comes from. And it is interesting to note that at the best known shrine of Our Lady, Lourdes, at the beginning, the miracles were worked at the spring of water Mary gave. But then the priests started to bring Our Lord and the sacred monstrance out in procession to the people. And then over many years, that is when the miracles of healing occurred. Our Lady, a monstrance, a tabernacle. Our Lady, the Old Testament Ark of the Covenant on a glorious and triumphant uh, uh, military parade, as it were. Those are some thoughts to have. Or, have you ever seen a priest leaving church? If you do, you must remember to kneel down if you can, carrying the Blessed Sacrament. He wears might just maybe just a little ribbon of a stole, and he has, he has our Lord over his heart. That's how Our Lady was at this first Eucharistic procession in the history of the church. She sets off alone, and she goes, St. Luke says, with haste. That means no distractions. That means no detours. That means a kind of a holy, focused silence. In all probability, she joined a, a caravan. That was the safest way to travel. But she avoided the conversation with which the other travelers uh, killed time. After all, she had our Lord in her heart and angels all around her. What need to engage in other, any other kind of talk? It's not sure whether or not St. Joseph went with her, although personally I can hardly see St. Joseph allowing his espoused bride to go by herself. In any case, she knelt down and received his blessing before uh, she departed. There's an Austrian or German artist, um, Furich, who gives a beautiful, he paints a picture you could use sometime in your meditation of angels going before Our Lady and removing any obstacles, any twigs or stones from her path and then strewing beautiful flowers before her and all the time they are singing. And then finally, about four miles out of Jerusalem, our Blessed Lady catches sight of Zachary's house at the town of Ain Karem. And there, there's one last steep hill for Mary to ascend. And she does so quietly and humbly and with an extraordinary dignity far beyond her 14 years. She enters the house of Elizabeth and she, the junior, salutes first her elder cousin. Our Lady was well raised. It's a sad thing to think today that most of our children aren't, and they never think to salute 
to greet first an elder whom they meet, not even a priest or a bishop. And yet well-raised children will, and Our Lady was well-raised by our by St. Anne and St. Joachim. She greets her first then, and then immediately, as the sound of Mary's voice comes into Elizabeth's ear, she feels the little baby in her womb jump for joy. And why shouldn't he jump? He's just been purified of all sin by God the Holy Ghost. Then little John the Baptist in his mother's womb, he wants to thank Jesus and Mary for the visit. So the saints tell us that the next phrase, although it is attributed to Elizabeth, it is the voice of Elizabeth, but these are the words of little John. Blessed art thou who amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. This is his act of thanksgiving. And Our Lady, she makes hers, the Holy Ghost fills her, and she prays her Magnificat, which has rung in splendor down throughout the centuries, which is the canticle of the Church's daily evening prayer, her Vesper service, every day of the year. My soul doth magnify The Lord, Our Lady says, my spirit hath exalted in God my Savior, for he hath regarded the humility of his handmaid. Behold, from henceforth, all generations shall call me blessed, for he that is mighty hath done great things, and holy is his name. Our Blessed Lady continues the Magnificat, that his mercy has put down the mighty from their thrones, and he has exalted the humble and the meek, the rich he has sent away empty. It is a most beautiful prayer. It's a prayer that we would all of us do well to learn at least in part by heart and to pray with Our Lady every day, even on those occasions when you would not be able to assist at the Vespers sung in the church. The Magnificat shows, as it were, the interior life of Our Lady. You have to have something like that an interior life. That is to say, this fountain of grace fed by the precious blood, bubbling up unto life eternal. If that is going on on the inside by grace, then regardless of where you are on the outside, whether you are cooking or, as in the case of Our Lady, carrying water, or in conversation with another, or confiding or listening to somebody else's cares, the Holy Ghost is always there. And you, like Our Lady, would be able to bring, regardless of where you go, some kind of joy. Why? Because you'll be bringing Jesus with you in your demeanor, in your spirit, as well as in your words. Mary's serene smile, think of it, reflected in the faces of all who saw her. One of the mystics notes that uh, the priest Zachary had a particularly surly old servant woman in his household. And she started out to be very critical of Our Lady. But soon enough she was won over by her ways. And she profited by imitating Our Blessed Mother perfectly. Our Lady helpful, Our Lady practical, Our Lady active, never tired and never waiting Again, an important lesson for children to be asked to do something. Her thoughtfulness was such that she just went ahead and took care of it. To meditate this mystery, I give you some S's to keep in mind. And the first of these is sanctify, the purpose of the visitation, the sanctification of John in his mother's womb. But then, secondly, to share all of the joy of a mother's heart she was meant to share now with her cousin, who was also about to give birth. And the third, to serve. She had gone there not to be served, but to serve her aged cousin and her household, to be finally and spiritually the source, the source of an immense comfort and good company and cheer. The thought of the visitation should cheer you up on an otherwise dark or maybe lonely day. 
I read of a Protestant lady in the 19th century who had an extended stay in Florence in Italy, where at the Uffizi Gallery is the original of the most beautiful painting I think has ever been made of the Visitation. This lady, although she had no particular knowledge of or devotion to Mary, used to love to go into the gallery and sit in front of that picture of the Visitation. And One day someone asked her why, and she said, it cheers me up just to look at that picture. Now, you who do love Our Lady, if you look at her visitation, you surely will be cheered and warmed in your own heart, too. Last of all, a couple of P's with which to conclude. Peace, first of all. Peace is prayed for in the collect of the visitation because the feast day was put into the Roman Missal in thanksgiving for the end of the great Western schism, when, as they say, although everybody kept the true faith, no one knew exactly who the right pope was. So both sides, the two great sides in the conflict, promised that they would start the Feast of the Visitation, institute it, and then our Lord, in thanksgiving for this honor to his mother, bestowed peace. Now, the peace of the visitation is symbolized by what the writers call the coniunctio dextre. That is to say, the joining together of the right hands. If you look at any picture of the visitation, you'll see Our Lady holding the right hand of Elizabeth. That's why spouses on their wedding day hold each other's right hands. That's why uh, still today, to greet someone, we may shake, put out our right hand and shake someone else's right hand. The second P after peace is to proclaim. There is something in this mystery which is extraordinary. That is to say that Elizabeth, under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost, proclaims the queenship of the Blessed Virgin Mary. And who am I that the mother of my Lord should come to me? The mother of my Lord. That is the ancient biblical Old Testament title of a queen in Israel. So by so doing, Our Lady is is proclaimed first as queen and her son is proclaimed as king. Right there in scripture for your meditation, the second joyful mystery. The last P stands for me in this mystery for pretty much everything you will find almost everything in the second joyful mystery. You will find even a solution for the sins against the faith today in our midst. Consider St. John, who would baptize with water only, but not the Holy Ghost, was baptized with the Holy Ghost, but without water, in his mother's womb. Surely you see here the germ of some kind of a solution which starts with prayer. So many graces, I was thinking as I was getting the sermon ready, so many graces are here at the visitation. No wonder I like to think of it as my favorite feast of our Blessed Mother. But I have something for you to think about today to remember the calendar, the 13th of July. On this day, Our Lady visited those children in Fatima. And it was a solemn, rather serious visitation because she had them visit by gazing down into it for an instant, hell. The hell, she says, into which poor sinners go. And why? Because they, like the Jews of old, did not know the time of their visitation. If you faithfully will meditate this mystery, no visitation, whether it be of joy or of sorrow, whether it be of dear Jesus or his blessed mother, will ever catch you unawares. And each time you will know the time of your visitation. God bless you. In the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Ghost. Amen.